Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 549, and today we'll be playing the Ranger in Backpack Battles. And so, I've come up to a bit of a struggle with the Ranger, not in terms of ranking up and leveling up, that's gone completely fine. I just find myself over and over and over again uh, going for the Lucky Clover Flute build. And I'm going to, to try my best and not have that come together today. Uh, I've really... Uh, did that over and over and over again in my practice games <laughs> and so I i'm a touch worried that that's what we're actually going to bring forth but let's not jinx ourselves let's jump on in see if we can't make something happen here that isn't that build and boy that's just what just what the shop offered up we got a whetstone we got a short bow so we can start building up to the the falcon blade and getting that going and then a reasonable start otherwise with the the banana and the piggy bank to give us a bit of early game stuff and so let me see where this financial actually gets us. Uh, I'm good to pick up the banana. I'm good to pick up the piggy bank. All right, we don't have the money for the pan. And so uh, off to a bad start, fam. Off to a bad start. Uh, again, I'll try to not just go for the uh <laughs> not not just go for the lucky clover build, but that's what it's really kicked us off with the with this start here. But nonetheless, good start. We got the piggy bank loaded up as best we can. The whetstone on everything and then even the banana to help push our uh, uh, push our stamina forward. I think we're in pretty good shape here against the Berserker, just kicking it off with the with the hammer and nothing else. Rocked them. Rocked them good. Rocked their socks off. Let's see what we can do. And so, you know, uh, interesting stuff here. You know, having the, the Walrus Tusk turns up uh, does give us a bit of opportunity to push over towards a Thorns build. And I, I don't recommend it. I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world, but it does give us some options here with this uh, with this Walrus Tusk combining over with the short bow. Uh, if you need to get like a, a little bit in touch with what the Thorns can do, uh, there's the, uh, the, the build around for it, right? The Poison Ivy. So your nature items give you a chance to resist or yeah, you get a 5% chance to resist debuffs. I was about to say resist poison, but it's resi resist all debuffs. But uh, after that, for every thorns you gain, you inflict two poison to the opponent. And then when the opponent gets 18 poison, uh, they take 25% extra damage. And so tying in with that, you can see the other uh, thorn based items with the little clicky thing on the shop over here at the bottom right uh, and to me it just a lot of these items are garbage right you start with the walrus tusk that's the what you would want to be the kind of big build around component uh, we can build out tusk piercers that's where we'll probably go uh, if we can, uh, in terms of activating these thorns along with that, we can make the tusk poker right now, which also lets you ramp up your thorns, but I'm just not a huge fan of these items. Like if we're going to put a tusk piercer and a claws of attack and a tusk poker on the board, it just takes up uh, quite a bit of space and quite a bit of stamina. And so we'll see. Again, I'm like, I'm not the hugest fan of blood thorn. I'm not the hugest fan of uh, thorn whip. These don't really... Um, build up in the fashion that I want in the sense that the leveled up blood thorn just doesn't do a lot. The thorn whip is what you're wanting to be upgrading other stuff too. So like the, the burning flame whip or whatever, just the stuff doesn't really come together to my liking. But the big thing to keep in mind will be the tusk piercer and the tusk poker uh, is the best ways to be using our walrus tusk out here. And so all right. Yeah, again, I, I don't recommend it, but I also don't want to just be doing clover builds every single game. And so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just take the tusk and go from there. Also happy to pick up another piggy bank. And here, like, there's not a ton uh, of value to get out of the box of riches. We're not going to have a ton of uh socketable things and so i'm fine to kind of just let it go we're getting our economy pumping off of these piggy banks and so using the box of riches to kind of just like sell half of the gems isn't something we need to do not looking for a spear you know, they're looking for uh more bag space which are going to get out of the the four slaughter that feels pretty good and i don't think we want the garlic it's not bad just as a means to kind of pick up a, a little bit more out of our um our early game foods, but it's not a, a spectacular addition to the early game. All right, and so how are we going to get this bag set up? We got to maximize our pigs out here. That looks fine. The, the the big question for this is: Do we want to turn the short bow into the walrus tusk? And I'm not opposed to it. Right, the it, 
the the bigger bow is kind of preferable but i don't want to just sit on the walrus tusk for eight turns and not have it do anything and so i think it's probably reasonable to just go ahead and grab that upgrade and I get the banana in here and then do we want the garlic uh, we can probably rearrange this bag to make it all work out Rearrange it to a degree, I guess. It's not going to get perfect uh, perfect pigs this way because <laughs> we need the two slot from the tusk, but I think this is fine. There may be a way to uh, arrange this just a touch better to get the access to that whetstone as the, on the pigs as well, but I'm not going to min-max that hard over two health. All right. All right, we got a little bit of forced direction. That's the <laughs> that's the best way to do this. But that is a, a great way to actually come out and learn how a lot of these compositions work. If you know, you 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 don't necessarily uh, get the best of starts with something, but you just you know start building around it and see what works and what doesn't. It's something that I do quite a bit in uh, team fight tactics as to where. You know, I want to see how a build works. It may not ex entirely come together, but we do want to force it a little bit. So when it does come together and the openings are there, uh, you really get a good shot at it. But picking up another Walrus Tusk, just exactly what we need to be doing. I feel pretty good about that. These other items, not that spectacular. We could look to pick up Pestilence Flasks, right? If we're going to uh, just come out and take the Poison Ivy, which when we gain Thorns and Flicks Poison, uh, getting our opponent to that 18 Poison can be a pretty big deal because it's going to ramp up the damage that we deal. And so maybe with the Poison Flask being on sale, I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't know if we'll get up to you know the full four, but it's something I'm interested in doing. Now we do have the second whetstone for the wooden sword. Turn that into the hero sword. That sounds like a win to me. Uh, we can navigate this a little bit here. We want to put the poison flask out. Like the, the walrus tusk, just like start a battle, gain one spike is not that impressive, right? It's just how many times is our opponent realistically going to hit us? Like five? So if they hit us five times, they take five damage. That's not that amazing. But if we put the Pestilence Flask on them early, uh, it's going to deal six damage after four seconds, which is much more reasonable than what the single Thorns does. And so I think we'll just go ahead and bring uh, the Flask in, pull the, the Walrus Tusk out, just kind of keep it as a uh, item combiner. And then I want to reserve the bag. We definitely want to pick up these four slot bags. Okay, okay, so... Getting the direction, it's at least good. It feels like, you know, we forced it a little bit, but <laughs> but but things are coming together kind of nicely. And so the things I'll be looking for is we want the big bow uh, the so that we can have the, uh, the Tux Poker, the big bow, and then the Falcon Blade. We're about to get the Hero Sword uh, out of the sword with the double whetstone, so it's going to need two gloves to upgrade. We'll be looking for that. Uh, and then otherwise, it seems like Pestilence Flasks are kind of where we want to be. Uh, otherwise, I don't think I'm amped about more pigs. I, I guess it'll pay for itself probably, right? These things sell for two, so it just needs to sit on the board for one turn to break even. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. Let's get this other pig in here. Anything interesting in this? You do have the, the buckler walrus tusk combo. It's not impressive to me i'm never happy with bucklers but it does give us a uh, a reasonable way to come in and pick up uh, a little bit of thorns and a little bit of damage mitigation right we aren't a composition that's going to be uh, just blazing down our opponent super super fast and so getting that little bit of damage prevention can be good in the early game uh, and then we can just sell it in the mid game right it's okay to have you know early game items that you do eventually sell and so Let's go ahead and snatch that one up, I guess. I'm just going to get rid of this onion, though. It's kind of kind of pissing me off in here, taking up all this space. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind to just... I, I want yellow flasks and pestilence flasks, so maybe we'll pick up a yellow flask and it'll, it'll make everything okay. Now, we are going to need to reserve the walrus tusk if we're going to waste a tusk onto the wooden buckler. We don't want to be uh, left tuskless. We don't want to be uh, without our, our, our big shaft here if the good bow does turn up, and so go ahead and snatch it 
Looks like we're slowly grinding down the Reaper. That poison's starting to pick up a little bit, but they're not doing much early game damage here. And so I'm going to say, I think we'll, we'll squeak it out. If, the, if it you know, trudged on for a few more seconds, it wouldn't have been that good, but I think that worked out okay. So now we do have to start asking ourselves a bit of a question in the sense of, do we want to just stack up these tusk pokers as opposed to potentially just looking for the big bow, right? We would kind of prefer to have, uh, where you at? The, the tusk piercer, the big bow, which uh, gets you the big chunk of thorns at the beginning and it lets you kind of spend them in a useful way, right? Really coming in and amping up this damage because getting that thorns damage in is just in incredibly tough to do. There's a lot of comps that just don't care. Like food comps are kind of just hitting you barely with a, uh, with an Excalibur. That's not a big deal. You know, if you just have one big weapon, you don't care. If you have ranged weapons, you don't care. And so like, I, I don't, want to just be like oh check this out i got like 50 thorns because that that's just not great we need to be thinking of thorns in terms of a consumable um thing kind of like say with mana and so i, I think i would prefer to have the tusk piercer turn up as opposed to building more uh tusk pokers but you know you may not actually get the uh, get the get the opportunity to just min max that hard but the bows will probably turn up they, they tend to do so. All right, so this is probably a reasonable place to stop rolling. We can decide here if we want to turn uh, a pig into a lucky clover or a lucky pig. This is something that I uh, kind of go back and forth on. I don't think with this build we want to, right? If we want to get, you know, kind of max value out of our... Um, our, our poison ivy, then we want these nature items just kind of hanging around. Uh, and we're going to need those little clovers to kind of maximize the debuff prevention. And so I'm going to just go ahead and lock our clovers. I don't want to, to spend them uh, on the pigs. So I think we look good here like this. Like, uh, I'm trying to think. There is, you know, percentage chance things that work with the pigs. You can't put, say, like the tusk poker up next to the, the lucky pig. The lucky pig gives you a, a, an additional 15% chance for that cooldown to work. But I still think it's worth it. I'd rather just have the, the debuff protection. All right, here's the pig. This guy's got it, the lucky pig up here. I think we're going to tear through this. He does have the rainbow badge to just get a big fuck ton of buffs, but his damage looks extremely slow. Yeah, just with the hero sword and the, and the dagger. All right, all right, leveling on up. Looks good to me. I don't think we're going to want the Thorn Whip. The The thing with the on-sale Thorn Whip is we can just get it and sell it later. So if the big um, the big bow turns up, then we can just get rid of the Thorn Whip and move on from there. I think that's kind of okay. Uh, it's just going to wreck our stamina uh, since we don't have a lot of ways to, um, uh, to regain. We don't have any of those potions. So here, I... I do like the leather armors in the sense that we're still at this kind of like early stage of the game to where the, the 45 armor is a pretty big deal. It just doesn't upgrade into anything useful. Uh, the vampiric armor is kind of meh, right? We poke with the falcon blade, but we're not going to be getting lifesteal off of our bow shots. And so it's a little bit shitty in that sense, uh, but we're not going to use a moon armor or a corrupted armor as it is. And so uh, maybe it's it's worthwhile. Uh, it just sucks. <laughs> Fucking fine. We're gonna we're gonna have to rearrange this bag hard. It might be the time we got to start just moving in on some of these pigs. Although, if we're gonna be real, I'm very unexcited about having this spiked shield. <laughs> like, I know we we already got it down and we got it upgraded, but uh, this is tough. It's tough. I mean, we can just put it in over instead of the armor. Hmm. I'm just gonna leave it out. I'll pro probably just probably just sell it at the next opportunity. Such a crappy item. 
So hopefully it'll be okay here. The Berserker does have a, a bunch of melee items out here. It's not just one big sword at this point. So we do get a little bit of bonus usage out of these thorns. We're up to seven at this point. So it should be kind of tough for him to actually come in and finish the job. But happy to pick up a bag. That looks good to me. Here's the first gloves of haste to get our hero sword into the falcon blade. Happy with that. Let's see what else we can find. And I don't think we want the bows. The holy armor. It's like I don't think we're ever going to use it. And the same deal with the leather armor. We're just kind of looking to sell it. Here's some good stuff, though. We'll pick up this acorn collar. It's another nice nature item that only takes up one hex. Stupid-ass thing out of here. <laughs> we we lasted, uh, you know, a, a moment. We lasted a moment with the... Uh, uh, the, the, the whip thorn within our bag. Alright, see if we can't arrange these pigs a little better. I guess he's doing fine. He's getting the double stack on the tusk and uh, the, the hero sword. And we get the double crits out of the acorn collars. Sure. We do still have two spaces left over to where we could get the the gloves on board. Hmm. Uh, I'm not certain if there's a way to arrange it to get these going. I mean, I'm just going to move on. Get that big glove-based upgrade onto Piggy Bank. <laughs> you, say, you say, give me them dollars a little faster, please. Getting to be about time to sell these picky banks, though. They've, they've served their purpose out here. But smashing on through. Another another person that unfortunately was meleeing us. <laughs> so good stuff, though. But again, we're going to take the, the poison ivy. Uh, give us the, the way to build towards our, uh, our thorns stuff. Don't want the thorn whip. I don't want the, the hero, the whetstone. Like... It's always just like too big of a dream to me to be building up the cross blades. Like the the hero longsword is trash, but the falcon blade is exceptionally good, and so I like building towards it. This is a, a fairly reasonable investment with the hero sword being good early, the falcon blade being good late, but the that uh, cost to get to right the one wooden sword, the double whetstone, the double gloves. That's not a super huge investment, but getting whatever it takes for this, like four whetstones, three hero swords and all that nonsense, it just makes it very challenging to actually find this thing. So I don't think we want the whetstones. I don't think we want to go that route. Ooh, pestilence flask is good. A lot of things in here I like. So we've got a pestilence flask. We've got a clover. I think we're going to have to stop there in terms of the money, but I'm not completely opposed to purchasing this, uh, this carrot. It's not great in our comp or anything, but Gives us a little bit of uh, a little bit of food usage out here. Let's see. I think we're actually going to have to. Now that I realize we got to get the poison ivy on board, we're going to have to do probably a pretty pretty close to full reset with these. So a start like this is kind of okay. Let's get the piggy bank out of the way. It touches the bow. It touches the acorn collar. Stupid ass spike shield isn't even a nature item. <laughs> Dumbass item. Alright. So where else do we need to go? We've got three clovers at this point, so we can come out like this. This gets us up to most of the items. Probably end up wanting it actually to be here. We just have to figure out the bags to make this work. Or maybe even here, right? If, if we're like, we definitely want the acorn collar right next to our, our two weapons. Realistically, the acorn collar is going to live uh, a little bit closer to here in this middle spot. That probably reasonable. Okay, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. This is a nature item, the walrus tusk. Okay. 
doing something useful, I guess. <laughs> I appreciate it, Walrus Tusk. You're finally doing something useful out here. You're doing more than the than the spiked shield, I guess. Oh, I've got our potions activating. Get these pigs out here somewhere. That looks reasonable. Can we get the banana in with all this nonsense? It's a nature item, right? Yeah. I assure you we're almost done with this. <laughs> I, I assure you. Now it's looking a little better. Okay, okay. So we've got all of the stars except one. Good stuff. Now we can fit in the pig somewhere else because we have this one hex bag. All right, took a while, but we got there. Keep saying nature. I wanna, I wanna drop a woo. Get a little, get a little nature boy on there. <laughs> I, I, I watched. There's a. They, they started putting like ESPN's Thirty for Thirties over onto Netflix, and uh, I don't know how much my wife really knew or remembered about Ric Flair, but. Like, I, I was in that age that grew up in that kind of classic Hulk Hogan era of wrestling as to where, I guess that would be like the late 80s, early 90s when they popped off. And I would, was in that middle school age to where wrestling was just the coolest thing on the planet. And uh, I, I very much remembered like Ric Flair and, and what a load of nonsense he always brought out there. But I never like heard anything about his story. And that dude, it, it's like depressing it's you know he like to have someone you know fly so high and do so well and then have their life just be a complete shit show it's like he just needed a friend he needed somebody to hang out with and you, know, you wonder how things would have changed for someone like him but it just sounded like he basically lived his life in the hotel bar trying to to have somebody to have a conversation with and like he just carried on this ridiculous lifestyle of it's like you have your family, right? Your family are people there just to hang out with you. It's like the, the Michael Scott, Scott Tots episode, right? It's so cringy to watch, but it's like his redeeming arc at the very end is like, I just want to have 100 kids, so I have 100 friends and people that can't not be my friends. And it's just like that. If I heard Ric Flair at the end of that documentary just say, like, yeah, I, I had 100 kids so I could have 100 friends, it would just absolutely make sense. But he was just such a shitbag to his whole family. It's like the people that are there to hang out with you because they want to be with you, you just completely ignore so that you can hang out with some rando in a hotel in Topeka, Kansas or some shit. And it's like, this is fucking obnoxious. But he talked a lot of shit about Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> I brought up Topeka. He brought up Kansas City a whole bunch as what a shithole Kansas City was and terrible place to be. I think that was actually his uh, his quote. It's like, what are you going to do at 2 a.m. in Kansas City? There's nothing else to do except sit at the hotel bar and get drunk. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. We'll get it back together, though. I, I, I just keep seeing the nature thing, and it reminds me of the old nature boy. I can't remember if he just died or not. I know that he's uh, he, he's in a rap video about cocaine. Ric Flair make a bitch go woo on the dick. Real classy lyrics. <laughs> it's a it's a nice combo you get when you when you jump into the battles with Bus Channel, right? You get to hear my hick ass voice, and then you get to get walloped a little bit when uh, when he dropped the Migos lyrics on you. And so <laughs> I think it's Migos, but. I got I got some culture in me. It's okay. <laughs> All right, let's focus back in. Let's focus back in. We're we're rolling through here. We're getting things picked up. The the bow that we're looking for has finally made in the appearance. And so this is going to be another big rearrange. Hopefully we can uh, we can figure this out pretty quick. I'm just going to go fast mode on the um, uh, on the on the rearrange moments here. I know we want to get the bow kind of facing in this way and then we need to make sure that we have uh, both our hero sword and our tusk poker hanging out within the ranger bag so we've got that going on that's good uh, having this kind of offset may actually work with our uh, thing here I was trying to see 
might be able to keep it up a row maybe in this kind of space so that it hits the tusk poker but then stays away from a lot of these other uh, non-nature kind of items. So we'll just leave it there for the moment, see how that plays out. And get this armor down at the bottom. That's just going to be in the way as well. Now, I want to find the natures in here. Oh, this is probably the way. One of the things we need to get, right? We got to get our crit thing in here. That's probably where it's going to want to be. One more hex over. Okay. So now it's touching the collar. The collar is touching the poker and the, the hero sword. Good stuff. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. What's left? We got to get the Tusk Poker down here to the right to load up on the Tusk Piercer. That looks good. Now, the only things I really care about from what remains in our bag at this point is we got to keep the gloves. We need to find a second set of gloves. I uh, need to get these potions in. And then the stuff that we have left, we can sell, right? We're kind of the, the end of the road for the usefulness of piggy banks. Uh, we're kind of at the end of the road of the usefulness for spiked shields. So if something turns up, I'm fine to just come in and get rid of those. Uh, not good, but to, to kind of move forward, not going to be using the, the gen lamp in this one. Let's start rolling a bit and see if anything better turns up. Uh, this is a good roll. We found another lucky clover. Get that moving with our friend in here. Found another pestilence flask, which we do want. Let me just... Just start selling shit. Okay, that got us up to eight. All right, all right. We're getting there. We're getting there, I assure you. Banana's not going to fit anywhere without some work, but it is a nature item. We can do one of these real quick. All right, here's one spot for the pig. Then I'm just going to sell this other one. I'm not fooling with that anymore. All right. Whew. This hick-ass voice. It's great. I'm a, uh, I'm a software engineer by trade. But you, you typically... Uh, two things with that. You, you typically don't spend a lot of time talking to clients. Right? People are typically unaware, uh, based on my name and stuff, that uh, I have this hick-ass voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I oh, probably assume with a name like mine that he's a white person, but uh, outside of that, there's no real indications on it. Uh, but you do occasionally have to like talk on the phone to people. And then at that point, like it really catches people off guard. Like it's been a, it was a strange transition to me moving to Kansas city in the sense that like where I'm from in West Virginia, everybody talks with a hick ass voice and it doesn't sound like anyone has an accent, but like moving across the country into the middle, like the, the Kansas City Midwestern accent is like the newscaster accent, right? The newscasters all speak with the, the Midwestern accent because it's the most like neutral accent across the country. Uh, and you come out here and like it always catches people off guard because you just don't expect it, right? If someone like, you know, you look at this dude and it's like, oh, it's just a random white guy, right? And then he hits you with like a super thick Scottish accent and it just like, you know, makes you makes you jar just a little bit. That's what I typically get uh, whenever I start talking out here. Is like, you know, people take takes them a hot second and be like, "Oh, this guy talks fucking weird," and then, and then it, it just fixes itself. But the thing with this accent is, it's not you know uh, stereotypically a, a land of great intelligence, right? You don't typically look towards Appalachia for your software engineers, and so I do catch like a bit of shit from like these rando clients that think they're all high and mighty because uh, they're talking to somebody that sounds like a dumb dumb <laughs> and it, it was one of my my favorite moments across uh across the professional workplace to when i i brought up something that sounds like very benign like it sounds like a a dumb thing to be saying and uh, the, the people on the other end of the line like audibly laughed at me. Like they audibly laughed at the question that I brought up in regards to the software that I was about to, uh, I was about to write. And I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. But here's this like minor explanation to where if we do it one way, 
it's going to be fine. And if we do it this other way, you're going to lose like $30,000. And then they're just like, silence. And then they were just like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, do it do it that way. Do it that way where we don't lose a fuckload of money. And I was like, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. You immediately judge this dumbass voice out here. You think I'm some kind of dumb dumb. And uh, <laughs> that's what you get for laughing at me. But if that's the if that's the most discrimination I have to face in life, I guess that's a pretty good deal. <coughs> All right, let's get this together, though. I'm starting to lose the voice. I've been doing too much chit chat in the video. Let's see if we can't bring this one home. And so uh, again, like I'm OK with the flutes as far as these builds typically go. Uh, it, it's, we're not like super locked in to um, like big bag space, right? We can sell the leather armor. We can, you know, line up some of these one hex items around the poison ivies. It's probably not too crazy to think that we'll want to fit some flutes in here. So let's just go ahead and grab this one that's on sale. Uh, here is the second gloves of haste to make the, uh, the falcon blade. We'll figure out a way to get this armor back in the mix. But we definitely want that happening out here. Grab another bag, keep filling out the space. And now with three gold left, I don't want to push this too much further. So, uh, so how are we going to do this? Maybe we just turn the Falcon Blade to the right. It's still going to get all of the buffs we want right. It's got the acorn collar. It's hooking up both the tusk poker and the piercer. Uh, are we going to be able to fit the leather armor in here with that? Maybe not. Probably just looking to sell it at this point. All right, so let's do this. Let's at least get the flute going in a little bit of a better space. That's probably decent enough at this point. We'll look to, to move the flute somewhere down here in the bottom middle. Uh, but as it stands right now, hitting two, three, four, five, six out of the nine hexes is probably good enough. Probably even rotate the banana and get it in with everything. Okay, I'm on board with that. Get the pig in here because we can. Leather armor, not going to deal with. We have probably enough hexes, right? We have five, six, seven, but I'm not going to figure that out. Uh, let's just go ahead and move on. The mark of a true master right there. <laughs> but all right, up against the Berserker. This is the kind of stuff that worries me against with like the Thorns builds, right? He's just got the one big giant ass weapon. He's never going to take a bunch of damage off of the Thorns. And so that's why we need to kind of think of it as a... Um, Think of it in the in the means of doing uh, like mana. So you build up a little thorns. It does a little bit of something if the opponent strikes you. But at the end of the day, it's going to be out here uh, landing the big damage with the uh, with the tusk piercer. But all right, this looks good. Now we can do what I like to do here. We'll have the flute. We can now get the flute uh, lined up under the falcon blade so it's going to be getting the bonus attack speed or the bonus speed off of it and now it's got just a big fuckwad of uh, items up at the top to hit as well we did manage to find some space for this leather uh, armor to fit back in potentially and i don't think i'm going to do that this is just another space to where i think we want to just build towards more uh flutes i would like to get a potion bag with the potion kit thing out here i haven't been paying enough attention to our stamina to see where that stands uh, maybe we can fit a little bit more stamina based stuff in here um, but we'll, we'll we'll come to that we'll pay a little bit more attention within this battle now here i don't want any more walrus tusks that 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 ship has kind of sailed do want the yellow potion and another flute turns up just purchase that outright I believe so it doesn't it doesn't feel like we've gone full-on flute comp like, <laughs> like like we do in the previous ones right but this is what you do run into quite a bit with this uh, this class having all of the lucky clovers running around giving you the avenue to uh, uh, to take advantage of these hex based items I think that seems reasonable. I'm not going to lock the stamina sack. Uh, we've got kind of enough space in here. We're going to sell this banana soon anyways. Let's see how this goes. Watch our stamina this round, though. See if we need to make an adjustment. Just nuked that guy, and it didn't drop below one. What is medium usage? 
we we start at like eight stamina but we're only using 1.4 per second so i guess we could add something else in if it turns up you do regenerate stand stamina randomly with the flute so maybe we'll look for another bow i, I know we did pass on uh we we passed on a uh, a, a bow and a poker along the way or a walrus tusk and so uh, it's a it's a kind of unfortunate but it is what it is kind of thinking of just picking up this wooden sword to to fill out the space but eh. such a crappy item all right we got ourselves a bag uh i want to push these over i know it's just going to completely mess up our, our our poison ivy it's one more up top all right, our poison ivy is just fully locked and loaded at this point. Good deal. All right, we'll keep stacking in these poisons and stuff. That seems reasonable. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting a, a, a lot of open bag stuff here at the end. I don't particularly like that. It's a... I think we just want to fill out with flutes where we can, but we do need to try and pick up another another weapon. I don't really care which one it is. I just start, well, I guess our stamina is draining here now. But the the Reaper rips out some of your stamina, right? What the giraffe does? No. Teague and stuff. Stone armor's maybe doing it. Did we win? I kind of, I kind of missed what was happening there. All right, let's move on in. Didn't lose too many too many hearts along the way. Feels like it's been reasonable up to here. All right, we got a fanfare. I mean, maybe this is just realistically the way all the ranger builds work, right? You you find yourself uh, picking up these fanfare style items. This one's not nearly as good. We do have some open spaces up here in the middle, though, to where it can potentially hit. But that does give us the opportunity for some empowered. Otherwise, here's a bow. I don't think we want to turn it into a lucky bow. We'll just leave it here. See if another, um, see if another, what you may call it, big bow turns up. Might need to. I do want to take a hot minute to make sure we get that in our ranger bag, though. I'm fine without, like, Superman maxing a lot of this stuff, but I, I think at a bare minimum, putting all of your weapons into the good crit bag is uh, <laughs> is, is, is a viable uh, a viable way to go here. So where is it even at? Why does this stuff have to be so hard to see? So can we even pull this off? We would have to shift... Uh, need to rotate the tusk poker up gotcha let's see let's let's figure this out real quick all right so here's our ranger bag okay that's reasonable We'll come back to the rearranging here. Oh, we got another flute. Cool. All right, it's getting there. Oh, fuck. We mess up our poison ivy, though. Uh, not that bad. All right, so where you at, Poison Ivy? It's all back to active. We can't uh, upgrade this short bow any further. Like, I guess we could turn the short bow into like a Fortuna's Grace, the but that doesn't strike me as good. We're we're going in on the thorns this game. Let's continue to go in on the thorns, and so that all looks good. Now we can get this stamina potion back with his friend. Get this thing up here, seven gold. Let's take a roll, see where that lands us. Another heroic potion. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not certain where this stuff stands in terms of uh, uh, where, where it stands in terms of our stamina usage. 
mean, if we find a big bow, I'm pretty certain we can just swap to that, but let's move in and see what happens. I wonder if you ever just want the broom. Like the, the crit wood staff, we can we generate a little bit of mana with the, the fanfare. And so you can get extra big damage out of this thing, as opposed to just trying to find another thorns-based weapon. I'm going to take the broom. If that starts to come together, fine, but there's only five rounds left. It's like if we find an orb in the next one and then uh, we upgrade the one after that, it doesn't leave us a lot of time to, to activate that thing. And we're just getting, getting crushed by the Berserker here. Feels like, feels like we're just being a bad, uh, a, a bad Clover build as opposed to a good Thorns build. Alright, we'll snatch up the sack. Don't think we want any of these pets. It's a, a little bit far away from that working. Just turn in, turn into the worst. Uh, we'll, we'll just come out here and be the worst. Um, what you called a uh, Reaper build that we can. Just get get maximum potions out here going. Does this stuff fit? All right, something like that. Only got three gold left. There, I mean, there is the mana orb. If we really want to push towards that, uh, you know what? Fine, let's do it. I'm gonna get rid of the pig. It's way too long in the game for that pig to actually be useful. Oh no, is this not gonna fit? Is this really like a, f a fucking four stack thing? It's only three. Why don't you fit up here? the hell? Oh, it is. It is four. That's annoying as shit. <laughs> That's annoying as shit. Uh, like, really needs to be in the in the ranger bag. But man, you can't face him up and down with all this stuff. Can you? Is, that, is this gonna work? If we just pick it all up and rotate it up and down, is that gonna give us the hexes we want? It's not. Uh... All right, well, I've already... Man, it's just so bad. It, like, it fucks with all the flutes. I, I didn't realize that it was going to to mess with everything this poorly. Fucking fine. Get everything messed up now. How close is that? I don't, I'm not certain how to rearrange these bags to make this work. Do this. We need this guy back here. Alright, we're getting close. We're getting close. Bear with me. Alright, that's a little better. I don't think we're going to be able to move the broom and get the mana orb in place. Broom. <laughs> Broom's not a nature weapon. That's what I was, that's what I was stopping to see. Alright, fine. We'll just go from here. See if we can outpoison the Reaper. We nailed him for, for the 33 right at the start. Just crashed right through that. Okay. Okay. Something's happening. So we get the Critwood staff now. It's unfortunate to miss out on these acorn collars, though. We've taken we only we've only seen the one throughout the course of the game. Now here comes a fun bit of rearranging. <laughs> I was waiting on the potion belt to turn up at some point. It's finally done it. We've got to we've got to rearrange again. Let's just get it up here at the top left. I think that's the way we can kind of figure this out. A 
that's that's pretty pretty optimal bag usage. All right, so now we're just going to be at the space where we have these two locations at the top and the bottom. Good, good. I'm not certain if... Right, well, it's like when the four potions are consumed, you cleanse four debuffs. But, like, a lot of times we just immediately tank all four Pestilence Flasks so we don't gain that much. But I guess at the end of the day... It's not a, a huge burden that we're we're managing there. And so that's good. We we've really kind of weakened up our our flutes here, but whatever. <laughs> At least the the crit wood thing turned back up. That looks good to me. Only three gold left. Let's jump into the next battle. Getting, getting murdered by the dragons. Not surprised. It's a, a much more powerful endgame comp than what we're out here doing. A lot of our stuff doesn't naturally work against them either, right? Getting a bunch of debuff protection from the Poison Ivy doesn't help uh, against a, a class that doesn't deal debuffs, and so kind of awkward there. But happy to pick up the Clovers. If we could fill out the rest of our stuff just with Clovers, I, I feel like that would be a pretty big win. I'll take the cheap Corrupted Crystal, though, give us a little bit of burst. I'm not opposed to the Cap of Resilience. Uh, that does let us uh, get a little bit of burst protection right at the very beginning, so I think that that's okay. Skip on the fanfare. We're not going to have the space for it. Can't fit these bags in. We have enough potions and stuff. Okay, it's like I see that on sale goober and know that we can we can rearrange our stuff to make it fit and then just sell it next round, but uh, I can't I can't can't bring myself to just keep doing that. Where are we at? I mean our stamina is staying pretty good now. It's it's gonna tank to the bottom, but and never activated. Ooh, that guy just wrecked us. He didn't take any damage. He didn't even have to spend his stamina potions. What what fucking happened with this guy? Like we, we took him down to half, he hits Battle Rage, and then he just shot right back up. What's he even healing with? Oh, he's gaining all, all of the heal off of the... Just from the rubies? Wow. That's impressive. Maybe I need to give the rubies a little bit more credit. I tend to not like them. But... I, I, I'm always in the camp that I'd rather be dealing damage as opposed to preventing damage, but... Dude just had it rocking right there. But this should be the last round, getting into to whatever we can do. I mean, I guess a whetstone gives us a bit of damage. It's tough to actually find a useful item at this point. How big are the flutes? Can we get one of these in? Probably get it in up here at the very top. Sure. One more. Our last one. Our last roll. Nothing. Okay. Into battle. Off we go. Let's see how it goes. The hammer comp from the Reaper. She probably watched our video and said, I gotta go do that. <laughs> if she watched our video, it would have seen the, the daggers don't really perform against thorns. But I guess at the end we had one thorn. I wasn't really going to be doing anything there anyways. And so, not bad. You know, we took down the victory. We picked up some MMR. And, and I think that that's probably the best that you can hope for with the Thorns comp, right? You, you have, to me, like, what are you really expecting Thorns to do? Let's say we have this ultimate, super big, strong, like, Thorns generation comp to where we have 50 Thorns, right? But then you run up against, say, like, the Pyromancer with the Dragons. Does fuck all. You run up against a, uh, a, a Reaper that's focused in on food, 
does fuck all. You play against the cheese comp from the Berserker, does fuck all. And so, like, there's just so many of these comps that Thorns don't do much against that you really have to uh, use it as a consumable resource, I believe. And so uh, that's why I tried to take this one in the space of we're going to pick up these big bows. The big bow lets you spend Thorns to deal extra damage because realistically, right, right, what does that 5, 10 Thorns really do? It doesn't do anything. And so... Uh, you have to convert it into something a little bit more useful. Now, one of the concepts that I'm I'm not certain how much it matters within this game is like the kind of comp that you're building. And so where I'm uh, I'm trying to to go with this statement is if you've played a game like Team Fight Tactics or you've played a game like Hearthstone Battlegrounds to where you win if you're in the top four, right? You don't have to get first place to win. You have to just finish in the top four, and so. One of the critical ideas and critical uh, composition building things you'll figure out is, is this a, a game winning comp or is this a top four comp? And so what you're looking to do is not get first, you're just looking to finish it fourth. And so if you're going for first, you may have to you know, really maintain your money and your economy until say the 35 minute mark, but if you're only playing to say the 25 minute mark, you can go all in a lot earlier knowing that you're never going to outright win the game, but you can power spike hard enough in the mid game to carry you to that top four and you get that MMR bonus. And, and I'm curious if that's not the kind of space that you really need to be in the mindset of with Thorns as to where Thorns are pretty decent early, right? You have people with a bunch of shitty weapon comps with like, you know, spatulas, not spatulas, <laughs> spatulas is team fight tactics. They have a bunch of frying pans and a bad, a bunch of bad, just like attacky weapons to where you might realistically be in a spot to where your opponent's weapon does like one damage per second and your thorns do three damage per second and you just crush them with their own thing. But as you progress on and on and get to this late game space to where the thorns doesn't actually do anything, that, that has me kind of in the mindset that this comp probably just aims for that break to where you don't play survival mode. And so here, you know, we could have never gotten 18 MMR or whatever it was. We should have just taken the 12 and said, that's it. That's what Thorns does. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong for playing with the, the, the plus MMR and quit. I don't know how hard that carries on, right? As we're only in Platinum as we move up into Diamond. I'm not certain if that's still a viable MMR gain strategy or up in Masters if that's a viable strategy. If you have to be, you know, getting those survival bonus wins to increase your MMR, I, I just don't know. And so uh, that's one of the things that will be kind of interesting to me to see as far as this goes on. And so I, I think that's probably the, the most major takeaway that you can get out of this video, right? Because as far as the composition itself goes, we were just building into a bad flute comp, right? We were building into the, the Clover flute comp that we play in all of our Ranger videos, but doing it in a bad way with all of these thorns is a very mid-type build that we put together here. But uh, there is a very realistic strategy. You know, it's not uh, bad to build towards these strategies to where you're just shooting for the poor fourth place finish and stopping. Uh, and I'm curious to see if that's not the where the thorns goes and that's a nice mindset to have. And if that's actually a, you know, very viable meta strategy to just play to the mid game and stop as opposed to playing towards uh, the survival bonus wins. Need a little bit more experience before I have the, uh, the, the good answers there. But nonetheless, good stuff. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. So I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way. You had a good time watching. This is Bustin' We Thank you for being here. <laughs>